For my whole life, my entire 22 years, my country of origin, Somalia, has been at war. In 1991, the government collapsed, and it hasn't effectively functioned since. So the question becomes, where do you go from here? Imagine that you were put in charge of a country like Somalia, a country racked by civil war or genocide or other forms of social conflict. Where would you start to rebuild? Would you focus on getting the government up and running again? Or would you prioritize the cessation of hostilities? My field, called transitional justice, offers us a bit of a different answer. Transitional justice focuses on righting the scales of justice, knitting social ties back together again, and moving towards reconciliation, or even forgiveness. It's a laudable goal, I think everyone would agree, but I think there are two main problems, and they're buried at the heart of the transitional justice enterprise. Here's the first problem. Transitional justice is too often directed from the outside in. It's prescribed as a solution from the international community that doesn't arise organically from within the conflicted society itself. And while academics that focus on transitional justice and international governmental organizations are very well-intentioned, they often don't have those intimate, local experiences of conflict in order to be able to determine what form of justice a society would need in order to mend. And that leads us to our second problem. Transitional justice is wedded to a vision of the world that is idealistic, but also limited. As a field, we tend to box justice in. We form it to assume a certain shape, an image, by the way, that is derived from Western experiences of social development. But if you create an ideal vision of justice, you exclude the possibility of authentic, alternative visions of social reshaping. If you create boundaries between illegitimate and legitimate justice, you exclude the possibility of reconciliation that escapes that binary. So maybe it's time that we rethink how we reconceptualize transitional justice. And that's what my research sets out to do. What if instead of directing societies towards models, Western models, oriented models of social change, instead we allowed them to chart in their own image, on their own terms, what the emerging society should look like? If ordinary Somalis, Rwandans, and South Africans participated and decided for themselves the path that they would chart going forward. That, I think, is the path that transitional justice should take in the future, and it requires looking at transitional justice from the margins. Thank you very much.